Mr. Executive, Mr. Serling is here to see you with this week's script. Oh, jeez. I can already tell this is... This one's really gonna hurt me. Just give me a second. Oh, okay, Dolores. Send him in. Mr. Executive, I've got another great story for you. That's, uh... That's real nice, Rod. You can put it on my desk and leave. Yep, a real great story. I took one look into the author's eyes and knew it was going to be a good one. Just like I do with every script I buy for the show. Wait, hold on. Let me get this straight. You don't read any of these scripts before you buy them? Well, I write parts of them. I have to dress them up for TV. These authors don't have the same experience I do. But you read the scripts when you rewrite, right? No. I just write what I feel the show is missing and shoehorn it in, even if it doesn't make any sense. Good lord, man! How do you get more and more incompetent each week? It's because I've been to the future. I already know I'm going to be a great writer, so now I don't even have to exert myself anymore. Uh, Rod, time travel is a complicated thing. Nearly any insignificant interaction could wildly change the outcome of the future. The very fact that you're no longer working hard could mean you actually never do any of the things that make you a great writer in that future timeline. My god, you're probably right. That means I have to go back. Back? Back where? You haven't done anything yet. There's still time for you to become a famous writer in the future. No. I have to go back to stop myself from becoming a famous writer. So that way, instead of me having to work hard to become a famous writer, I'll get to lay around and become a famous writer, thus changing the course of history. Uh, Rod, I... Look, I'm just a middleman in all this. You don't have to come into my office each and every week. I'm pretty sure I've told you you can just mail me the scripts, or even just leave them with Dolores. The stress of... Learning how your life works and how your brain operates each week is ruining my life. It's putting a strain on my marriage. I don't know how much more we can take. You know what put a strain on my marriage? Not killing Hitler in the war. I was going to, but the government stopped me. They wanted to save the glory for Dug Out Doug. Boop. Dolores, I can't take this job anymore. I want you to buy me a one-way ticket out of town. There's only two departures scheduled for tomorrow. Would you like the first one? No, I've still got some personal things to collect. Buy me a ticket for... The Last Flight. The irritate the irritate. Flex perplexities. Poise puzzles. Magnify mysteries. Impose inquiries. And coagulate quandaries. But more importantly, they ask one question. Why would you make this? Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for listening. This is Why Would You Make This? The only podcast to tell you the truth, but you straight up reject it. And the only follow-up question you ask is, why would you make this? I am Jimmy Time. I am joined by my co-host, Huge. How are you, sir? Yes, sir. I am fantastic. Cool. Probably. And we also joined by J Delta. Wagwan. Wagwan, Wagwan. I am delirious with tiredness. <laughs> really? And exhaustion. Oh, that's that's cool. Yeah. That's America, baby. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Explosions and exhaustion. <laughs> uh, that's right. what we're all about. Exhaust pipes and exhaustion <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. some other E words. I don't know. Erosion? I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, probably some of that. <laughs> Elephants? <laughs> well, we definitely, like, lock some of them up and, like, beat them with pipes right. and stuff, right? Uh, <laughs> it all comes full circle. E-cigarettes. <laughs> we give those to our kids. Yep. It's yep. all around there. All right, so we watched The Last Flight, the 18th episode from the first season of The Twilight Zone from the 1960, which first aired February 5th, 1960. Wherein a World War I British fighter pilot lands at an American Air Force base in France 42 years in the future. Cool, right, yeah, <laughs> we did all yep. that, great. Yeah, that definitely happens. I feel like this is an innovating, innovative episode. I, I do. You know? I actually enjoy this episode. Yeah. Like, th this is maybe the second one, I think, that I, I'm, I'm actually like, yeah. I want to say yes, but I couldn't tell you what the first one was that I enjoyed. Uh, 
Uh, the one, the one where the three astronauts? four of us are four of us are missing or something like that. The the three the astronauts. Three, the three astronauts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The fourth guy was in the hospital bed. Uh, yeah, yeah. It ends with just an empty hospital bed. Yeah. Oh, okay. The four of us are dying. Yeah. Yeah. No, that wasn't it. No, that's not that, it. That's the guy. Who that's the guy who changed, changed face. face. That one was. Really oh bad. no! That was awful. Uh, what's the What's the one with that, the? <laughs> that was the one where the old man was like, "Look at him! Look at him!" We're like, "For what? Just look at him!" <laughs> <laughs> like, why? Like, what am I looking at? <laughs> oh man! All right, so we still don't have a segment three. Yeah, I don't know. Hot. Hot debate. Hot debate rebate. Yeah. I don't remember what the hot debate was, and I didn't ask anybody to, to talk yeah. about it. Uh, this week's hot debate. We're doing great with hot debate. <laughs> yeah, the people are talking, yeah. and they are asking, what is hot debate? <laughs> hot debate. What is hot what debate? You tell us, and we will ignore it. <laughs> we will not mention it. Uh, I don't know. You guys, you guys seen any of the new Twilight Zone Yo, episodes? it's all bad. There's no <laughs> debate about it. Holy shit. Look, the original Twilight Zone was half an hour, except for that one season where they're like, right. let's try an hour. And, oh, brother, it did not work. And they went back to half an hour yeah. real quick. Yeah, new series does not catch that hint. Oh. They're up to, like, what, episode eight now? Nine, something like that? I can say I'm up to episode three and a half because I... this The new series was the first time I ever just turned an episode off <laughs> midway. I couldn't believe it. Just just not into it at all. I was like, mm, too slow. Maybe later. It like just the premise. It was it was like a kid is getting elected president. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. And you were like, yeah. It, the, like the way you know, they got to the part where they were debating and they were like, What's your policy on taxes? He's like, Well, taxes are good unless they're bad, but sometimes they're good, but you shouldn't pay them, but you should. And I was like, Really? They didn't even like debate prep the kid? Mm. Eh. Nah. And he's not saying anything wacky. He's just no. Like, what if, what if, like a like a real kid? And he was like, I don't know, uh, candy, but not candy, because some people don't like that. Yeah, dude, it's it's brutal. Yeah, that I feel bad rough. that Jordan Peele. Well, no, I don't, because he's getting paid a ton. But man, he's like they they attach his name to it, but he's not. He's so like, he's not writing any of the. No, no, no. He's, 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 he's just he is legit the new Serling, where he's just like. Oh, he's yeah, just, okay. I I'm thought he here. was also like. You no. Know. And you give me a story, and I'll be like, "Yeah, that's good. I'll shoehorn a character yeah. into that." <laughs> and... <laughs> um, yeah, it it is hot debate is not needed because it's just bad. Ugh. All right. So I guess now that we heard the truth, let's go on to the truth hour. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that truth in it? Over where? Over there is the truth. Truth. <laughs> Here comes that truth. I'm drowning in truth. Truth is what is going to be the end of me. He's drowning in the truth. Somebody call the truth lifeguard. <laughs> Emergency is drowning. The, the truth waves are taking me oh, oh. I'm taking me over. The truth lap god isn't here. He's banging his truth girlfriend what? under the truth bleachers. Oh, no. <laughs> and that's the truth. Learn safety swimming. They can't see your hands on your hips. They can't see your can, fucking hands on your they, goddamn hips. They can feel my power. Yeah. And that's the truth. <laughs> My uh, hand is uh, touching your, your hand. hand. <laughs> I couldn't tell you a single thing Dusty Rhodes talked about in his promo. I could tell you snippets and clips of the things he said, <laughs> but I don't know what they amounted to I or just, what the story was. I just know that if a man works hard for 25 years, he should get more than a gold watch and a shake on the hand and a good luck jack. That's all I'm saying. I, I don't know. A how computer took your job. Yeah. <laughs> Sell a you fighting a guy, not even for a title. You just fighting him. You just You're fight. just fighting a guy for nothing. Because <laughs> they scheduled it because you gotta get paid somehow. That man owns a computer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be damned if I'm gonna lose to a computer man. <laughs> I'm the plumber man. <laughs> Yo, Dusty's typewriters. <laughs> Dusty's. <laughs> well, he hates the. He hates all my technology. 
A computer taking our jobs. <laughs> I mean, he was a spokesperson for a lot of things. <laughs> he really could have done that. Those West Texas ink ribbons he for did. Chinese typewriters. <laughs> Don't let a computer take your job, daddy. <laughs> You want good, strong ribbons, Daddy. <laughs> you don't want them ribbons that be coming down the aisle with the Ultimate Warrior. They snap off, Daddy. You don't want them. <laughs> you want Johnson's <laughs> typewriter ribbons that stay strong the whole way through, Daddy. <laughs> you get them down I Jimmy John's Toyota Dillathon where you get a free handshake if you come down and buy one from me. All real commercials. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's done. Those are all real. He got paid. So, let's talk about some other true things that happened. Okay. January 31st, Joseph McNeil, a 27-year-old college freshman, was turned away by a racist using the words, we don't serve Negroes, when he tried to get something to eat at a bus terminal in Greensboro, North Carolina. Yo! A bus terminal yeah. thought they were better. A bus? <laughs> than a, than, Holy than shit. The college first kid was in college. They're like, shut up, you garbage. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we've come a long way since. <laughs> yep. Uh... What great progress this fine country uh... has made. I mean, we don't use the word Negroes anymore. That's a long way to go. Also, nobody eats at bus terminals anymore. That's the real, <laughs> that's the real progress, folks. I gotta tell you. Because that's the part that's actually changed. <laughs> February 3rd, U.S. President Eisenhower at a news conference announces that the U.S. shall be made able to make nuclear weapons available for its allies. So you can't have nuclear weapons, but we can, and then we can sell them to you. Yeah, hell yeah, that's right. That's freedom, Don't baby. make them yourself, but buy them from me. Yeah, baby. I got what you need. Come on down, Jack! Daddy, you need to blow up an enemy! We make these nukes come. from hand. We don't even use computers. <laughs> yeah. I will throw you the finest hydrogen bomb made by American hands, Jack! Ain't no computers touching this! No! 26,000 pounds of nuclear soul. <laughs> this is one hell of a device, folks. <laughs> <laughs> They give you a whole hell of plunder coming down on them, Daddy. <laughs> when you touch this bomb, you know where it's made by American hands, Daddy. My bombs! We're touching, I'm touching your bomb! No, your <laughs> land! No, hang on. My hands! It's touching your it's land! It's touching your land! There it is. <laughs> your land is gonna be our land! <laughs> That's a hard voice to do. <laughs> how did he do it his whole There's life? So much energy involved. Yo, how was he so overweight with all that moving and dancing and shaking? Dude, like, for real, like, I keep thinking, like, I'm getting old. I, it must be my yep. diet or, like, I, I can't. No, I'm just not doing cocaine. That's how I'm <laughs> fucking up. I'm just not doing cocaine. I, I should be doing cocaine constantly, obviously. Time has passed. It's got to be healthier for you now. Yo. We have to have made healthier cocaine. They definitely made better versions of that. <laughs> gotta, dude. And I gotta start trying it. That Whole Foods cocaine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fresh imported. It's right next to the guava. So next we have MyBirthday.Ninja, which lets you know about... Oh, no, sorry. No, we didn't... That's sorry. February 5th. It's got to do that first. February 5th, the CERN particle accelerated was... And not, wait, the CERN's, the CERN particle accelerator. There you uh -huh. go. The CERN particle accelerator was inaugurated in Geneva, Switzerland. Yo, I'm so glad we got that in. <laughs> I'm so, I'm like, I was about ready to leave. <laughs> I was going to walk out, right? But then you brought it home. But now I know. Now we all know. That was where things went wrong. Yeah. That was where it all started back in the 60s. I'm Yo. fucking stunned that they had that back then. I didn't even think they knew what a particle was. They were, we were making atomic bombs, but we didn't know what a particle was. Hell no. Have you seen those fucking atomic bombs back then? <laughs> I mean, not for nothing, but the older I get, the more it's very clear to me that anywhere you go, 
there's only one dude who knows what's going on. Yeah. There's only one guy who knows what's going on. Everyone else is like, yeah, I've done, I, I think I've done that before. Sure. Bah, bah, bah. Yeah. And they ain't got no clue what they're doing. So it's probably the same thing. We're like, hey, can you split an atom? But not instantly. Like, make it so, like, when this bomb hits the floor, like, a, a tiny microscopic <laughs> knife cuts in half. Because that's how I think bombs work. A little gnome with a hammer hits yeah. the atom. Can you do that? Oh, yeah, I rigged that up when I worked for Star Wars. Sure. I can, like... <laughs> Ninety <laughs> like, percent of technology comes from one dude at ILM. That's it. It's, it's the one guy that didn't get a show because yeah. he didn't need it. He yeah, had, yeah, he had bomb money. Yo, <laughs> holy shit! Imagine having bomb money. Woo! God damn, can, that's the dream. Yeah, that's, Yo. The, that's the American dream right there, having bomb money. And that's the truth. Right, so now we can go to my birthday dot ninja, where you let you know that you were a male in your last earthly last earthly incarnation. You were born somewhere around the territory of North Latin America in approximately 1675, and your profession was dramatist, director, musician, or bard. Yo, I'm having a stroke listening <laughs> to that. So North Latin America, North, well, North of around the territory. Around the territory, territory north of, of Latin, Latin America. America. What? That's like a, that's America. <laughs> Isn't that America? <laughs> a dramatist. <laughs> Isn't that a show on CBS? The dramatist. Yeah, yeah. Was that? That's where they put on plays to solve crimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait a minute. This is just like Hamlet. I forgot how Hamlet ends. Up, I so know. I don't know. <laughs> the, the, the wife did it. You know, like they, oh, we want you to try out for the role of the murderer. And they're like, okay. And then you stab him like this. Ah, wow, you did that so well. How'd you do that? Well, I've done it before. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you damn it. I would have got away for it too if I wasn't so desperate for work as an actor. <laughs> Yo, honestly, who could re resist show business? Right? Mm. The Yo, the glam? I know you said what you said, but I heard <laughs> hookers. I'm sorry. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. No, I said hookers. Yeah. yeah all right. That's no, all I said. I, I know that we heard no one can resist the glitz and glam of show business, <laughs> but you heard the phrase hookers. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, 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 yeah. I heard, yo, hookers are in show business. Yeah. I was like, well, yeah. I'm that, glad you get my lie. subtext. <laughs> Uh, also, a brief psychological profile of your past life. You were sane. Oh, okay. Why say anything else then? <laughs> How times have changed. You were a sane, practical person. Also a materialist with no spiritual consciousness. That, for me, that doesn't seem sane. Yeah. Yeah, my words. birthday dot ninja is doing the work this month. They are doing a lot. Also, his, uh, past life, brought, his, the wisdom you brought is you shouldn't develop your talent for love. What? Happiness. You, you should just do things. Do things, spread joy. This, that not making any sense. You're reading Beatles lyrics again. I, yeah, a hundred percent. Let's just move on to the, the best hour. Best hour. Our favorite hour. Our favorite, favorite hour. hour. The Troy McClure hour. Oh, hello there. I'm Troy McClure. You'll recognize me from such mental health awareness videos as I'm no doctor, so maybe he is Hitler, or. Who do you think you are recovering from amnesia? Today, we're here to talk about immediately believing anything anyone says to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my fucking favorite part of a good fucking Troy McClure skit is when <laughs> folks like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, God, that was fuck yeah. good shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, director William F. Claxon who directed this, he goes on to direct three more episodes of The Twilight Zone, one in 61 and two more in 62. You pronounced that wrong. It's yeah. William F. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, you know, Serling wrote this, <laughs> but not really. But he kind of did, whatever. <laughs> Serling didn't really write this, which explains why it's so great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so we have Kenneth the High. <laughs> hey. Hi, hey. <laughs> what did you do to my sister? <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. Why do I presume every last name is Swedish? <laughs> <laughs> oh. What's this guy's last name? Uh, G 
Guterres. I don't know, man. That's some weird. <laughs> so William High <coughs> plays, or excuse me, Kenneth High plays Lieutenant William Terrence Decker. He's famous for things like the 1963 Cleopatra or the 1971 Eagle in a Cage. You may recognize him as the war minister in the 1993 the young indiana jones chronicles he nope. died in uh 2018 oh oh yeah a long time probably that socialized medicine over in the uk mm, how mm-hmm. dare you how dare you have that oh you mean me say it never mind <laughs> uh next we have alexander scourby who plays major general george harper You might recognize him from the 1953 The Big Heat, the 1959 The Redhead from Wyoming, and the 1959 The Shaggy Dog. Nope. Nope. No. Okay. (laughs) 0 for 2. That's all I have listed, because that's kind of sort of all that. Yeah, that's pretty much Whatever. I mean, I could have listed the... uh, the General. Well, there's the, the Major General. Who is the main, who's the there's general. There's the general, and then there's the major general. Well, no, there's the major general, and then there's a major. Minor general, I guess. Who's not, and then yeah. there's a, yeah, and then there's a, there's a, what's the other guy? He's a the Air general Force, in A minor. The Air Vice Farce Marginal, which is the same. <laughs> it's a magical. It's a marginal magical. <laughs> it's a margin of magical marvel, marvels. So you can see the full cast of Druid I'm doing if you want to look any of that up. If you can spell any of it. Uh, let's go on and start the show. I fucking want a transcript of every episode. <laughs> I just want a written transcript so bad. Yo, you're gonna learn what a dyslexic computer looks like. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna learn. Was what my a, cat on the keyboard you're, again? You're, yeah. you're gonna learn what a blown up computer looks like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that computer took your dyslexia, daddy. <laughs> We get the opening narration. Witness Flight Lieutenant William Terence Decker, Royal Flying Corps. Returning from a patrol somewhere over France. <laughs> what? Royal Flying Corps. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that does kind of spoil the end. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Surly was trying to tell us in the beginning. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's how that works. Oh, man. So, yeah. Witness flight, Lieutenant William Terrence Decker, Royal Flying Corps, returning from a patrol somewhere over France. France. <laughs> <laughs> a, com- ah! a computer should take your job, yeah, Daddy. Yeah, for real. Yo. Yo. <laughs> Yo, if a computer could take your dyslexia... Please. Yo, that'd be amazing. The year is 1917. That's why I can't fix my dyslexia. Yeah. Because I haven't figured it out yet. The problem is that the lieutenant is hopelessly lost. Lieutenant Decker will soon discover that a man can be lost not only in terms of maps and miles, but also in time. And time, in this case, can be measured in eternities. Well, not really. No. A couple decades. Yeah. Pretty clearly, yeah. Yeah. The exact number of years is 42, but it's not. Uh, As all that is said, we see a biplane pilot look confused Mm -hmm. as he lands in an airport in front of a large W Bean W 2 cargo (laughs) ship. I don't even remember saying it. (laughs) That's why I keep doing it. It's great. Um. We see a sign that says, Welcome to Lafayette Air Base Remis France. Or, uh, how are we supposed to say that? Remy France. I don't know. Blackout. France is how you're supposed <laughs> yeah. to say it. Flance. <laughs> yeah. Florence Flance. Blackout. We come back, and on the airstrip, a jeep with sirens pulls over the biplane and makes the confused <laughs> pilot get out. As anyone would be, would be yeah. confused in that situation. Uh, he's British. He's British, and he's confused at how advanced the Americans are. They're confused at his confusion, and they take him inside. Inside, the general is very amused to see this man. He addresses himself as Second Lieutenant William Terence Decker, of Royal Flying Corps. They accuse him of putting on an air show or filming a movie or something strange, but then they realize no. 
He's from the past. Yo. Immediately. And they tell him, what do you what do you think this is? And he's like, 1917. They're like, no, son, it's 1959. <laughs> and he's like, oh. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you better get with the times, buddy. And yo, the the major, what's his name? Major. I, I forget. Major. Uh, he, oh, uh, Major Wilson. Yeah, yo, a hundred percent is just, like he has fallen for every scam yeah. his whole life. <laughs> Absolutely. Yo, he was not supposed to sign up for the military. No. Someone was just like, "Hey, man, sign this paper. You could win a million dollars." He's like, "Yeah, really?" He's like, "Well, you you can. I'm not saying you yeah. will, but maybe there's a chance." Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying like from this paper. From this. No, I'm no. Just saying, <laughs> in life, yeah. I mean, it could happen. It, the possibilities are endless with life. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, they're like, no, it's 1959. He's like, no, it's I'm from the past. I'm the Royal Flying Corps. And then he looks outside and he sees a, a jet engine. <laughs> and he's like, oh my god, it's true, all of it. <laughs> uh, Decker's like, I flew up into a cloud and that cloud must have sent me through time. And I'm yeah. just like, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Is I mean, like, I know flying was new in World War yeah, One, but, but but you're like, I flew into this fluffy, majestic beast in the sky, <laughs> and it hurled me back through time. No, no, that was a cloud. You got some rain on you. Yeah. Why is it, for both of you guys, that a British man... In 1917, sounds like fucking William Shakespeare. <laughs> Hawking on to me! <laughs> Hell you, Yanks! Because everybody knows there's two yeah. types of British. William Shakespeare or street urchins. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I say, my young squire, it seems orphans are rat -tat tatting at my window. Please, sir, <laughs> may I have another portion of mead? Be gone, street urchin, before I boil you into glue. Oh, not again. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> That's them scurrying away. Hot debate. Are there more than two types of Brits? <laughs> <laughs> We've gotten... The street urchin. Oh, well, 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 now, yeah, because yeah. they've evolved. But yeah, back yeah. then, it was just the two. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Can't argue with that. I don't know time travel. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see them for myself. I don't know time travel. So, yeah, Decker's like, no, I was flying. I was flying with Colonel Mackay. And immediately, uh, the General Harper, he's like, oh, you... Colonel Mackay, you must mean Air Vice Marshal Mackay. And he's like, no, Yo, that's not what I mean. Like, this guy's got to be just the fucking most loose-lipped. Like, come on, we can't just be shouting out names yeah. of our top generals like that, can we? <laughs> Especially because immediately after, he's like, oh, don't give me none of that. You're here to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, You're here to kill him because he's on his way yeah, right now yeah. on the plane due in exactly 15 <laughs> minutes mission. from a northeast heading <laughs> that nobody knows about, and nobody's supposed to know about. Uh, yeah, but Decker's like, no, no, that's not possible. It's just not possible. He's like, why? Why isn't it possible? He's like, because he's dead. I, because the back and forth that was right there happened yeah, yeah. so quickly, I kind of misunderstood it, and I thought he was like, no, I'm from the past, just ask my CEO, Captain McKay, and he's like, well, he's coming here right now. No, he can't be, he's dead! And I was just like, wait, what is this story? What is this story? <laughs> no, it can't be true! <laughs> so we got another blackout, and we come back, we're in the Harper's office, the General's office. Uh, Major, what is it, Wilson, Major Wilson, mm. He argues with the general about the whole thing. No, it, it can't. It's not a joke. It's not an assassination attempt. It's it's real. This hey, the guy really is from the. I mean, he seems. I know he doesn't say from the past. He's like, but he's he seems pretty genuine, Captain or whatever, General, whatever. Everybody above me is a captain. What? Why would someone lie to us? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the general's like, no, 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 no garbage, dismissed. Yeah. Get out of here. Get out of here. So we go into the interrogation room, and this is like the meat of the story. This yeah. is the whole thing. Uh. I love this. The Major enters the room and Decker's at me like, why am I being held prisoner? And the Major's like, come on, it's not all that bad, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Yo! And then 
<laughs> and then literally he's like, I mean, don't blame me. I'm just following orders. And I'm like, you just fought a war about that thing. A whole war about that. Oh, my God. How quickly we forget. How quickly. I'm surprised there were Nazis in the 60s. Yo. I'm surprised. What? Uh, I, it took us a while to get back, to get all the way back. Oh, don't like that. In numbers. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, this is another, I love this again thing. Decker's like, you have to believe me. You have to believe me. And the major lights a cigarette and then throws it out in disgust. <laughs> oh, I can't believe your story. It's trap. You, you tell me you travel through time. You know, an old guy and you, that's it. Oh, that's all of them. Oh, I can't believe it. That's unbelievable. Decker's like, oh, oh, oh old lead bottom. He's not going to like this. And they're like, what? What are you talking about? Oh, well, oh, Mackay. It's an old nickname about, uh, his name was Old Lead Bottom. He got shot in the butt. Because he got, yeah, he got shot in the butt. But he's got to be dead, though, because I left him. He was surrounded by seven <laughs> German planes. And I said, fuck that. <laughs> and I left. <laughs> and the major's like, well, look, I mean, war's a tough thing. Sometimes it happens. I'm sure he'll understand. Yo. No, he won't understand because I did that every single time <laughs> we went out on patrol. Yo. That was my modus operandi bar none. 100%. I have never identified more with a character on screen before. <laughs> he was like, yo. I felt the same way when I saw his large scarf in that, <laughs> that first scene. I was like, yo, this is my kind of dude right here. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I would have been like, I'd have been on the runway, like, oh, it's not starting, guys. I'm sorry. I guess I can't go on this mission. My bad. Maybe next time. Maybe next time you don't yeah. even have a key in the ignition. Just making the noises. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Please don't have keys. What are you yeah, doing? Please. You just have to push the button up. No. It's not working. It's not. <laughs> That's right. It was a crank. <laughs> just... Yeah. And you had to throw your leg into it for some reason. Yo. That was weird. Really elegantly, too. <laughs> well, you have to have class when you're fighting a wall. <laughs> well, as a Shakespearean British man, of course. <laughs> I'm not one of those common street urchins. I'm a Shakespearean British. <laughs> I could say, sir. Have you met Vice Admiral Lieutenant O'Shaughnessy? Right! <laughs> <laughs> Where are you say, Governor? I'll do it right too quick as a bib. That's that's the one where oh, uh, the guns have seemed to have stopped working during mid-flight. Go check them out, Rachel. What is all kids said? <laughs> Climbs out on the plane and just like <laughs> working on the gun mid-flight. <laughs> all right, yeah. So Decker's like, no, dude. The rules of the army is like, don't split up. Patrol as a team. But every time I was like, yo, let's split up. And then I hid in the clouds. <laughs> I'm a coward through and through. Like I, I would. I daydream about getting captured because they treat pilots better than all the other prisoners of war. Like, sometimes I would just shoot my own plane and be like, look, I got shot. Isn't that great? I survived. <laughs> like, I suck, dude. I suck. <laughs> and and I'm like, yo, that is a confession from Serling. Yeah. 100%. That's so true. It yeah. is 100% him confessing. That's the part he wrote in the whole script. That was it. The, that confession. I've never seen a subliminal confession before, but there <laughs> that was, it is. That was it, 100%. That was the whole thing. So, uh, yeah, we get back to Makai. He's like, no, because when I said I was I was escaping and being chased by three Germans, there weren't three Germans. I just left. I just abandoned him, <laughs> and he had seven surrounding him. And he's like, well, maybe, the Major says, maybe somehow he got help, and someone helped him, and he survived. And Decker's like, oh, yeah, that thing you just said. Where some random dude maybe showed up and helped him? That's me through time! <laughs> that makes so much sense, yeah! I gotta go back in time and save him then so he could save everybody after that and come here today. Because if I don't kill him, if I don't save him back then, he won't be alive 42 years in the future. And the Major goes, that's insanity, Decker. <laughs> Because it, it, like, even though I understand how time travel works in this context, yeah. he what he said was insanity. Yeah, complete insanity. I I have to leave to save him so he can come here and let you know that I'm me, so that <laughs> he can let me leave. 
So Decker punches the major in the face. Yes. Clean out. Like, Yo. I'm starting to think his last name is not Decker. That is a nickname. Yeah. He just, oh, Dex people. And he goes to the ground. He opens the door of the interrogation room. The guard comes in. The guard goes down. Yo, he what? is gone. My favorite part is he, is he like, catches the major, yeah. lays him out. The guard runs in. He fucking punches the major in the gut. And 100%, that guard is the guard version of the pilot where he's like, yo, I'm not dying for some Shakespearean fucking pilot. <laughs> like, punch me in the belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, oh, I think my r- appendix ruptured. Oh, you yeah. don't believe me. Go, go without me. So uh, Decker runs out of the building, down the street. It's like a military base, but down the street and like across a hangar. You see him run across the whole hangar. Yeah. There's no reason for it. Uh, I, I, I think what happens is a landing helicopter reminds him of the propellers of his own plane and it drives him momentarily insane. Yeah. Because that's what you see. A helicopter lands, and then he's like, ah, and like holds his own head. <laughs> I think his mind was just blown at the concept of a helicopter. Oh, I could have been that, too. <laughs> like, you, sh- you could have showed him, like, cotton candy. You could have been like, ah! <laughs> Yo, which would make a lot more sense on an Air Force base than a helicopter. <laughs> yeah, what are you, uh, of course. What are you talking about? <laughs> so... Decker runs and starts his biplane. A mechanic shows up. <laughs> he runs into the circus hangar <laughs> by mistake. Yeah. There's just a cloud of guy. <laughs> <laughs> we we can't have this much fun in England. Uh, so yeah, he starts his biplane. A mechanic tries to stop him, but Decker <laughs> fucking go. punches him clean out. Uh, luckily the major wakes up and runs outside and pulls a gun on Decker and he's like, get out or I'll shoot you. And he's like, do it. Kill me. I'd rather die than die Mm. (laughs) and not save all the people that Makai saved by not going into the past and saving them. (laughs) And the major's like, (laughs) ah, and then the plane takes off. (laughs) The plane starts going and blows off the major's hat. He's yeah. powerless without his <laughs> yeah, hat. That's it. His authority's been compromised. Yeah. He was, oh, no, I'm just a private now. <laughs> aye, aye, sir. Dude, oh, legit, when the plane like broke away from the major and he was like, oh, there it goes. And it took off and it disappeared into the clouds. I was like, oh, right, that's a real plane. <laughs> <laughs> I was so shocked when it, when it took flight. I was like, oh, the magic of the Twilight Zone. It's amazing. I can't, oh, wait, that's a real plane. These that's special a real plane effects are from, unbelievable. From our real past. That's a real thing. <laughs> so we go to General Harper's office, and the general is reprimanding the major. Like, oh, you really done it this time. You're going to get it this time. This time is this time. And Mackay arrives. And the general gives the major like a stern look, like "Don't you fucking know. like like it's you know your kid yeah. you bring into somebody's house if you fucking make any noise, <laughs> we're gone. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. We go. Uh, the, <laughs> the major just straight up asks Mackay, oh, "Do you know anybody named Terrence William Decker?" And he's like, "Oh, Yo, Decker, eh?" This motherfucker can't keep his mouth shut. Yeah, the general's like, "You dirty motherfucker! <laughs> I want to give you such a spanking." <laughs> uh. Mackay's like, yeah, yeah, I remember him. Oh, he the plane's over German in the seven, and then he just disappeared on me. I don't know what happened. But then he came back out of nowhere and saved my life. And he's like, oh, but but he when he died, like, don't sometimes the Germans they collect the material and send it back to you, right? <laughs> and I was like, like no, they okay. don't. I was like, that's <laughs> wrong. No, they fucking don't. <laughs> and MacArthur was like, Of course they do, but they didn't this time. I was like, they don't they do must anything. have ran out of stamps. They never do it. Yeah. <laughs> And they got sick from licking all the envelopes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was it. The old German stamp poisoning <laughs> incident of 60 whatever. Two of the Brits from 60 Jerry. 60 skidoo. Ah, <laughs> oh, the fucking skidoo. It's been like eight episodes of bliss. Oh, I haven't heard, heard yeah, skidoo. I haven't heard any skidoos. What if I say Scooby-Doo instead? <laughs> old 60 Scooby-Doo. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay with it. That's all right. You stink too. Uh, so yeah, the general's like, no, they didn't return any of his personal effects, and the gen- well, the other general jumps it on the desk, and he's like, what, what is all this? You tell me right now, I demand to know. And the major's like, well, then you better sit down, old lead bottom. And he's like, whoa. whoa! 
and we pan up to the stars <laughs> as we hear the closing narration. Dialogue from a play, Hamlet to Horatio. There are more things in heaven and earth that are dreamt of in your philosophy. Dialogue from a play written long before men took to the sky. There are more things in heaven and earth and in the sky than perhaps can be dreamt of. And somewhere in between heaven, the sky, and the earth lies the Twilight Zone. Terrible closing narrative. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. I, I know we say this every time. I just, I hate when we get to a part where I go, oh, Sterling wrote that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every oh, time I'm man. like, oh, Sterling wrote that. <laughs> uh, it's the whatever. Oh. Yeah. Decorated war vet. Right, Sterling. Mm. For what? <laughs> For what? Take that, hit that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I thought. Yeah, I thought again, it wasn't this that bad of an episode. this is one of the best we've gotten is, so yeah, far. Yeah, it like, really this, is. This is one that you know, straight up. I I kept forgetting to watch the episode, and then like I, I put it on, and I was like, yo, I remember the entire mm -hmm. yeah. thing. Yeah. Front to back, because you know, again, this is this is definitely one. one of the stronger ones. This is ones they play during the the, you know, the marathons. The, the, this is one of the ones that they play that make people think the Twilight Zone is actually good. Okay, then I can see it. I'm starting to see it. Then. Yeah, this is one of the ones where I'm like, oh, this okay. This show's not yeah terrible. I, all the the time. problem is, I I'm pretty sure they use this exact same premise like three or four more times, where it's like a plane takes off and it lands in the past this time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And just military alone. There's mm. Oh, there's the one where there's the, the so military many. squad and they're out on patrol and then they go back to the past. Yeah, it's it's literally just like eight words. It's military, past, <laughs> space. No, that's it. It's just that's three just words. Three just words. Three. Okay, good. It's just three. Good. I was worried about complexity there for a second. <laughs> really saved the day. Uh, yeah, Hollywood thinking cap, but I don't think we need to make it better. Yeah, it was you know, good. I, I, I mean, know. maybe maybe you could like update it with, well, you know, we fucking uh, the first Gulf War, second Gulf War, if you want it, but you you really don't have to. Sure. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the uh, tropes and morals. Uh, well, I don't know how many morals there were in this episode. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. really uh, you can't really find too much of a moral and let me go and save my friends in the past Wait, what? <laughs> thanks to this magic space cloud yeah <laughs> it's about hero sacrifice and a magic space cloud like <laughs> <laughs> well, you kind of lost me there <laughs> i lost you in that magic space, <laughs> magic space cloud. cloud yeah yeah uh so some of the tropes we have are uh it's actually just two things in the same it's we have uh Badass Grandpa, which is uh, Air Vice Marshal Mackay. Mm. He was the badass. Oh, the old war vet grandpa. Yeah. He's so cool. Uh, and again, another Mackay thing, which is uh, both embarrassing nickname. Oh, sorry. All three, actually. Embarrassing nickname, shot in the ass, and trust password, mm. which is <laughs> old lead bottom. Yeah. That was the, you know, the embarrassing nickname, obviously. Shot in the ass, obviously. And trust password is, yeah. <gasps> oh, that's How a you know? word yeah, that knows. you know. Only he can, yeah. Uh, then we have Dirty Coward and Screw This, I'm Out of Here, which is Decker abandoning Mackay when he flew off into the, Hell yeah. the cloud and never came back. But then he does come back with the heroic sacrifice and redemption equals death. Two tropes they have there, which is when he comes back and saves Mackay. It's like when you start off identifying it with a character, you're like, that, I get it. And then he does something, you're like, oh, no, no, oh, no, no. that's I not me. I thought I knew you, but no. <laughs> yeah, I don't get you at all. <laughs> Sacrificing yourself for others. What? <laughs> Come on. How do you get ahead in that? <laughs> so why would you make this? Uh, well, it was written by Richard Matheson, uh, and he's written things before. I'm almost certain writer, the apparently. the one with the three astronauts where they disappear yeah. was, was based on a Matheson story. Right. So clearly he's it's, the work. Yeah, he's he's the genius, yeah. not Sterling. Um, why would you make this though? Like, like I've also also mentioned is, uh, we've talked about Serling being considered a fairly poor soldier in the past. So again, maybe this was yeah. some sort of a confession or complaint about soldiers just straight up going, no, I don't give a shit about that fucking guy abandoned. I'm out of here. Then Fuck that. he wanted that moment where they have to realize, no, it's, you're supposed to save people because they're better than you. Or, I don't know. Save me. 
They uh they just started uh on Hulu, Catch Twenty Two, making a TV series uh, about yeah, it. Yeah. And the fucking it. the whole show, the main character is a hundred percent like a coward, mm-hmm. and it's great. Yeah. Cool. What's Catch Twenty Two about? A fucking coward in World War Two who does everything he can to not die as a bomber pilot. But his uh I guess general or like his commanding officer, like there's like this rule. It's is a real rule. Yeah. Where mm-hmm. if you if you willingly put yourself in dangerous missions, mm-hmm. then you're crazy and you need to be taken out of the military. Right. But if you say this is too dangerous and I need out, then you're sane enough to know that you shouldn't do it, so you're fit for combat, so we we will not take you out. Oh, great. So it's like, a, it's, so they're saying it's like a catch-22, no matter what he does. Yeah. If he says, you know, he can't claim he's crazy, but then if he says he's crazy, it doesn't work either. Oh, uh, yeah. Great. Time to shoot myself in the foot. Yeah, why didn't you just do that? <laughs> He didn't listen to this episode. <laughs> if only he could go back in time. I have to go find that cloud. <laughs> oh, yeah, that damn cloud. All right, so the next episode, uh, unfortunately, I watched this on Netflix, so boom, it immediately shows up. <laughs> yeah, fuck yourself. Here's the twist. So, yeah, so, of course, I immediately was subjected to a U.S. Army lieutenant serving in the Philippines during W. Bean W. 2 so develops much. an <laughs> uncanny ability. We said it during the truth hour, I yeah, think. we did. Uh, develops an uncanny ability to see within his men's faces who will be the next to die. Uh, so yeah. Uh, well, what's Ooh. the twist? It's the most obvious twist that could possibly. Oh, he, he sees he, his own he's face. His own death. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, but Serling, who uh, I don't know. Eh, whatever. Serling says, next week we show you the face of war, but the kind of portrait we venture to say you've never seen before. Dick York and William Reynolds star in The Purple Testament, the story of a man who can forecast death. That's next week on The the Twilight Zone, The Purple Testament. We hope you'll join us. Thank you and good night. There's a little more mystery involved in that one. Mm. You know. Because you're like, what the fuck is a Purple Testament? <laughs> yeah, I don't understand that at all. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, you know, I went season nine with it. And said that uh, his men get fed up knowing that he knows when they'll die. Ooh. So they all gang up on him and take him and force him to look into the mirror so he can see his own death. Mm. And then he immediately turns to a skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> but I like, like a Halloween store skeleton. Yeah, like, yeah. like <laughs> with the teeth, the mouth yeah. open and all that. Yeah, and they're like, oh! And then Sterling's like, sometimes you shouldn't mess with the unknown or whatever it is. <laughs> sometimes oh, the mirror looks back at you. <laughs> Some, sometimes you shouldn't mess with the unknown. Sometimes it's unknown how to end an episode. <laughs> <laughs> and so don't mess with me and the Twilight Zone. Uh, yeah, so again, that's fucking... Super obvious. He's gonna see his own face. Yeah. Do you guys remember? Is that the twist? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Great. Grand. Uh. So plug victoryprowrestling.com. Victory Pro Wrestling returns live to City Region, Long Island, New York, June eighth. Cool. Is the next one? Yeah. Is it? Oh. This will be about June eighth, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. June eighth for um fans' choice. Oh, oh yeah. fuck! I'm gonna tag team match. It's me and uh Tibbs. Okay. Versus coach and stockade fans, pieces of shit, get to choose either a normal tag team match. Right. Which would be, I mean, that'd okay. be nice. I mean, it's a wrestling, uh, isn't it? Kiss my foot match, which, as the king of New York, yeah, you know, people should be doing it anyway. People should be kissing my feet, so that, that'd be pretty great. Out of it, but yeah. Uh, or a doors match where you got to put your opponents through doors. What? Yeah, because uh, Stockade likes putting people through doors, and that's going to hurt. Oh, Stockade's still going. Oh, Good Stockade for him. is still going. Good for him. Yeah. Good. You you better do a you, fucking you better do a fucking bit. Kiss my doors what? match where he throws you into the door. <laughs> Yo. and you get to it and you open it real quick. You hide behind it and close it. I close and it. And he comes over all angry and knocks I, on I, it. Oh yeah. my god! No, <laughs> no, 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 you're not coming in. No, no. And the coach comes in behind me and I'm like, oh no! And I Why? go out and I close the door and I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. 
go. Yo, Fresh was upset that I didn't, that we didn't pitch the last gimmick to him, which is that Puppet Delta wins the Women of New York. What was it? The Queen of New York tournament. And then the Human Delta marries Puppet Delta and secures the monarchy. Yo, <laughs> if only. Get, yo. <laughs> it's... That would have been good. It would have been good. <sighs> I, I will say, yesterday at, at, at EJ's wedding, I was talking to... Uh, to Dorian Graves, and he's like, "Yeah, man, I'm like over it at Beyond. I'm trying to get killed off." And I was like, "How dare you?" <laughs> he's like, "No, no, I'm talking about like actually like them killing me." And I was like, "How dare you, sir?" Can try to do. How many times have you asked them to shoot you full of rebar? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, but you're not coming back as Ghost Dorian, right? Then it's all fine. It's all yeah. fine. Our plans are okay. All right, so hopefully you'll hear about that and more in the future of Victory Pro Wrestling. Yeah, see you on VictoryProWrestling.com or follow me on Twitter at DJ Delta. Nice. Huge. What do you have, sir? Yeah, so you could follow me on Twitter at Chronically Enfeebled. Also, at Atomic Huge. Ooh. You have two ats? Yeah, it's one of the two. I just can't remember which one it is. I think it's not Atomic Huge. I think it's Atomic Huge because people couldn't spell like chronically he, or enfeebled or something like that. That's yeah. true. Uh, where you, yeah, so follow me there, where I'm working on some stuff, some, some long form bullshit about various stupid things, video games and whatnot. Way to sell yourself. Yeah. <laughs> More importantly. Uh-oh, here we go. You can watch all the best of Dusty Roads mm. on DVD and mm. possibly Blu-ray? Mm. Mm. Also streaming, I'm sure. Probably. On WWE Network. I mean, I have a poem, man. You can watch him in the dog collar match. You can watch him in the bunkhouse match. You can watch him in the four corners match. Mm -hmm. You can watch him in the computers match. (laughs) I just want like a collection of all of Dusty Rhodes. Promos. No, his WCW commentary. Oh. Oh. (laughs) All the weird shit he said. Oh my God, yeah. He whacked it with the Weber. (laughs) Uh, oh, if I could just hear one more clubbing in the bella <laughs> Exactly. Uh, all right, so go there for huge. Go there for Delta. Go to www.ymt.com for all things. Why would you make this? Links to download. If you don't like using iTunes or Google Play, you check it out on YouTube. Our intro music is Falling After Love by Kill Paris. Uh, Sad Graham cams also yeah sexually arouse yourself by sad grandmas on sadgramcam.com <laughs> yeah <laughs> well so, <laughs> so for you and jay delta and sad grandma i am jimmy time and please remember that without mistakes of others we'd be forced to endure the pain of failure ourselves support the arts <laughs> <laughs> support the grams <sighs> support the grams the preceding recording is for entertainment purposes only and the views expressed in this podcast do not necessarily represent the views of Why Would You Make This, its owners, employees, or associates.